Good evening, everyone. I'm Michael Lyle, the Chairman of the Town of Monroe Planning and Zoning Commission. Welcome to the regular meeting, date February 20, February the 1st, 2024. It is 7.02 p.m. If you'll please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. We'll call the roll, starting on my right. Dominic Smergolino, alternate commissioner. Brian Condon, commissioner. Dan Ambrosi, commissioner. Robert Wesselin, commissioner. Nicole Lupo, alternate commissioner. Kathleen Gallagher, planning and zoning administrator. Sarah Stroud, recording secretary. Okay, we do not need to... Do we need to see... Yeah, we do. We're in short one. Wait, one. We only have a one. Yeah. So oh, we got either Nicole or it is. Commissioner Condon has the list. Does he? It yeah. does. And then once you freeze up the date on it, Mike, if you are out of date, I'm tired. Uh, so next up would be Dominic Panicia, who is not here. And then it goes to Nicole. All right. We will see Commissioner Nicole Lupo tonight. All right. For the public hearings, first public hearing, uh, SUB 2023-04-127 Main Street uh, will, has been continued uh, to the February 15th meeting. You want to add anything to that? Uh, the town, and well, first off, do we need to go back to public participation, general public participation? Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. General public participation. If anyone in the audience tonight would like to address the commission on any item that is not on the agenda tonight or not before the commission, so not including other projects that we will have been talking about, just anything that's different, this is the time to do that. Raise your hand, be recognized, and then come on down. Mr. Lenica. Name and address for the... Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Joel Lenecker. I reside at 70 Hunting Tower Road. Um, I'm still trying to understand the change of getting rid of our town planner. Um, and Kathleen Gallagher is a great addition to your board. I've been in a number of meetings now. I really know your rents. Um, you give good advice. Um, I don't know your credentials or your background. Um, However, we are seeing many, many applications for housing, business. We have a plan of conservation and development. Um, how many, has anybody thought about taking any continuing education classes that the state offers for land use boards? I might want you to consider that in your day-to-day uh, planning for your group that each year, maybe two representatives from the board, um, maybe based upon Kathleen Gallagher's suggestion, uh, whether whatever hot topics there are, to kind of have you guys go up there and learn some of those things directly via Zoom, via through the committee. I know when I served on the board, there was numerous opportunities for us to engage in education, and I found some of it really valuable. I do not know what the state is doing since I have not been on the board in a long time, but I found it very helpful because I got to interact with other people from other communities and I wasn't just locked into my own little perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lenniker. Is there anyone else here tonight that would like to address the commission? Is there anyone online that would like to address the commission on items not before the commission at this point? Seeing none, then we'll move on to public hearings. As I mentioned uh, prematurely, first public hearing has been continued for 215. 
Yes, so the uh, town engineer has issued a memo dated January 1st, uh, January 30th, 2024, that's been entered as an exhibit into the record. Based on those comments, as well as comments from the commission, uh, the applicant did request for a continuance of the public hearing to the next meeting. Um, they are then beyond their 35 days uh, that's required in order to open and close the public hearing. They have sent um, a letter of an extension for seven days in order to get us to that meeting, um, and they will submit material prior prior to that date for board review. Thank you. Our second uh, public hearing, SCP 2024-01604 Main Street, 590 Main Street. Um, it's also uh, not going to be heard tonight. Uh, go to Ms. Gallagher for the explanation. So we are going to hear public comment tonight. However, uh, we did receive a determination by legal counsel. At the last meeting, we had talked about that the application was for a principal use for an auto repair facility. That was determined to be a grandfathered use, uh, which was determined during the CM auto collision application process. Since then, the applicant has provided additional material, which allowed town staff to review records for the property. And based on the Zoning Board of Appeals determination um, in 1985, 2003, and 2019, they granted a location of approval, which prior to July of this year was a requirement that was needed in order to get a repairs license from the DMV commissioner. Based on that information, town council is now making the determination that the auto sales, which was included in those approval of location documents is also a grandfathered use. So now the determination by town council is that both the principal use as an auto repair and the accessories as an auto sales is a grandfathered use, which means it's no longer a change of use and does not to need to be in front of this commission. So the applicant tomorrow is going to put in for a withdrawal of that application, and then we will be able to process it uh, just with the zoning compliance. However, because it was noticed for tonight, what I would like to do is still hear the public because I will now be the approval body for that. I'm working with them for screening and things that we heard at the last meeting as well um, as this meeting. I also wanna make it clear that as part of the approval of location documents, there was five conditions that the applicant had to meet in the past, and they will be required to meet those moving forward uh, for this facility as well. And those are, there shall be no more than 13 vehicles parked overnight in designated spaces on the property, eight of which for repair and five of which for sale. There shall be no parking or storage of other than personal vehicles. There shall be no parking in front of the building um, faced parallel to Main Street along the north-south access lines. Uh, there shall be no external used cars or for sale signs, banners, or the like, and signs within uh, inside the automobiles are permitted. Uh, so the applicant will be required to still comply uh, with those five items. Um, again, this is now going to be processed uh, just with the P&Z staff. Uh, however, if there's anybody here tonight, I would recommend uh, to the commission that they hear those people so that I have the opportunity to hear the public's concern um, as I work with the client, uh, as I work with the applicant. Okay. Thank you, Kathleen. Any members of the commission have any questions? Have you, Kathleen? Is there ever a used car license held on that place? I know there was a general repairs. There was never a used car license. I don't know, because that be, would be between them and another entity, so I don't know if they actually had the full license, but they did receive from ZBA the approval of location, which they would need in order to get that license. Yeah. For auto sales. That's an accessory use. They did receive an approval of location for repair auto sales. But I don't think there was ever a license on that, that property, right? I don't... We have received exhibits from the applicant showing that it was there were cars being sold. We they provided pictures to prove that that use was in existence. Car license, and I don't have the answer to that specific question. Show they had a used car license on that property because if it did, it's not a continued use. 
I can talk to council uh, about that. We yeah. So I like to see information. The, this was the termination that he gave. Yeah, I like to see other views. I don't on the information he's received. You read this. Any other questions from the commission? <clears throat> if not, then are there any members of the audience no. side that'd like to uh, comment on the um, 605 or 590 Main Street proposed auto repair and used car sales facility? Yes, come up to the podium and just give your name and address. <clears throat> Hi, good evening. I'm Subhane and I live at 25 Park Road. And my question to you is, knowing Dave Bodner, who operated that repair shop, <clears throat> that building in its last incarnation, he did not have a used car sales permit. He told me in person that he was not permitted to have more than two cars out front of that business at any time. He could not sell cars there. So while I understand about grandfathering in and auto sales, I'm not sure how it is that a grandfathering in of, I think, mean, auto repair shop, I'm not sure how grandfathering in auto sales is, it, is happening when it never was an auto sales before. It was an auto sales before. And if we want to, I'm happy to actually read council's letter word for word in order to have that into the record, which I think would make more sense. Well, Dave Bodner may, may have sold a car or two but he certainly did not have 12 cars on the lot for sale. He told me that at night, bring all the cars inside, there could be no cars parked outside at night. Um, he was the last auto repair shop there, except for the tire shop, which was a huge disaster. It was disgusting, run down, abused, misused, um, best. We tried to get um, moved out of there. Eventually they were evicted for non-payment, but they just were parking tractor trailers there. It was, we couldn't get anybody to enforce any of that. So I know for a fact that there has never been a used car lot. I've lived there for 30 years. I'm friends with Dave Bodner, who ran that business for years and years and years until the tire shop. He did not sell used cars. He told me how strict the town was about how many cars he could have parked outside. So to now tell me that 12 cars could be parked outside with screening a few, bushes in the back is, is ridiculous. It has never been the case on that corner. So I don't know what information you have, but I do not believe that there was ever a used car, uh, used car sales was permitted on that site. So I'm going to read town council's letter. They took their determination based on the record. Just for correction, town attorney. I'm sorry, town attorney. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that was. Confusing. I'm so used to. Uh, yeah, I'm legal counsel. I'm used to yeah. legal counsel. So I thank you very much. I, I apologize for that confusion. So the town attorney and he reviewed the approvals that we have for the site. So whether he <clears throat> sold two cars or sold more cars, what we have here is what we have of record of what was permitted as part of the approval of location yeah, permits. Exactly. That those five conditions. So I'm gonna read the full letter, which is gonna reiterate those five conditions again. You asked me, the letter is addressed to myself, Kathleen Gallagher, Planning and Zoning Administrator, dated January 31st, 2024. You asked me to opine on the applicant's rights to use the property as an automobile sales. As you may be aware, on December 11th, 2023, I rendered an opinion regarding the use of the property relative to the then applicant's request to use the same as an automobile body shop. In said opinion, which is incorporated by reference herein, I concluded that general automobile repair and maintenance was a permitted non-conforming use upon the property, but use as an automobile body shop was not. In reaching said conclusion, research revealed that the property has enjoyed use as a general automotive repair and maintenance facility since at least 1985, but never as an automobile body shop. The research reve further reveals no evidence that there has ever been any evidence that the property owner desired to abandon or can, dis can discontinue the prior use. The focus of that opinion was relative to the issue use as a body shop. The question presented relative to sales was never presented. A review of the land use files for the property reveals three prior approvals issued by the Zoning Board of Appeals, location approval for general repairs license. These approvals are a statutory condition precedent um, to the issue by the state of the general repairs license 
uh, General State Statute Section 14-54. Until amended last year to rest with the Zoning Enforcement Officer, the authority was once within the sole purview of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Nevertheless, while these approvals were not variances that run with the land, they, at a minimum, evidenced the authorized use of the property at that time. The first of these approvals was issued in 1985, the second in 2003, and the last in 2019. All the approvals included the same material conditions of use as evidence on file, um, on filed site plans to it. One, there shall be no more than 13 vehicles parked overnight in designated spaces on the property, eight of which for repair and five of which for sales. Two, there shall be no parking or storage other than personal vehicles. Three, there shall be no parking in front of the building faced parallel to Main Street along the north-south access lines. Four, there shall be no external used car or for sale signs, banners, or the like. And five, signs within slash inside the automobiles are permitted. Therefore, there is clear evidence of the prior use, not only for general auto repair and maintenance, but for the limited accessory use of automobile sales as conditioned above. As such, it is my opinion that the property may be used for automobile sales strictly subject to the above conditions, which have been imposed on the property since at least 1985. Please do not hesitate to contact me for further questions or comment. So then I don't understand if that was the case, why the applicant is looking for a variance, needing to get a variance. Because we didn't have this information at that time. We didn't have the town attorney's opinion on that. So this is dated January 31st. 2024, which is yesterday. So without this information, without the burden of proof is really on the applicant to help us work through what the previous use was. He, they were able to provide us some additional information, which allowed us to go and pull more of the files from the basement because we're going back to 1985 um, to look at some of these. And now that we have that additional information, we were able to give the town attorney more information in order for him to render this opinion. So that's great. That's part of the grandfather. You, Correct. You're telling me. Yes. So the fact that it's now a V1, it, it's irrelevant because you're going to just grandfather back. Correct. A used car lot with up to 13 cars parked on the corner of my street. Yes. That's, that's what it's all. You understand why we're upset about that? I understand why you're upset about it. I also understand that we have to hold ourselves to the regulations and the standards that were approved by I'm, a previous audible. I'm not sure where that's coming from. As I said, I spoke at great length with the previous owner. And he was so clear to me about how the town was demanding that he not put cars out there at night. He, he might have a car with one sign in it for sale during the course of the day, had to be off the lot and inside this building at night. There could be no cars parked there overnight. So it, it's just kind of interesting to me where this all of a sudden came from. I don't understand. All I know is that that's a small lot behind that place. 13 cars is, is insane. And, and they're proposing, what, a few bushes for screening? Really? For where? That one fellow that was behind there or all of us on Bar Road? It just doesn't seem adequate, nor I, I do not think it's taking into consideration the needs and the, the desires of the folks on Bar Road, Vincent, Verna, Mellon, Patch, April, and May. And Harmony, I might add. Thank you. Kathleen, I'd like you to reach out to the town's attorney. Sure. Because general repair is totally different than a used car. General repair license, you're allowed to sell three cars a month. It's not a used car license. And so, I, I mean, I'm in the business, so I don't. So, <clears throat> a used car license that's never been on that property, in which it's not zoned for that property, can't have a used car license. Because a general repair license allows you to sell three cars. It doesn't allow you to... That's what we're talking about, just right. the three cars. No. No, we're talking about up to five cars for sale. Well, is what it says in your not for sale. Not for sale. What the other thing I'll have him clarify though is is we're talking about zoning. Current we're talking about planning and zoning. We're not necessarily talking about his relationship for, for other permitting. So, oh, so five is grandfathered in, even though the current regulation limits it to three. The current uh, user. I'll get his determination no, on it. I can't give you that determination no, right no, now. That's what it's a free amount. But as your scope, as the commission scope, as planning and zoning, and what we're willing to permit, and what 
license he actually has acquired or had. Right. Again, I'll have an attorney to to clarify All right, that. Let's do that. The That's what we'll do. Yeah. All right. Okay. Are there any of the members of the public that would like to comment on this application? Yes. Excellent. So I'm forward. The public is so easy. <clears throat> My name is Kathy Lindstrom, 298 Guinea Road. Um, Dave Bodner was actually the guy who did all the repairs on my car and my husband's car. We dealt with him for many years. He had, I concur completely, as she said, never saw extra cars there, never saw for sale signs. My question to you is this. If something, if there was an existing business any, any place in town, and it went out of business, and it never took advantage of the conditions that might have applied, how can you grandfather it in? It's not like it was operating as a used car lot. It was not. So how, what gives you the right to say, we're going to approve it based on um, something that came out in 1985, but nobody has acted on all those years. That makes zero sense to me, regardless of whether there was a license or no license. It's not a business. It was not a viable business that was doing business for all these years. On that basis, I would say it absolutely does not belong there, just on the fact that it was not a continuing use, regardless of whatever conditions. The other thing I also wanted to ask about is planning and zoning does have an obligation to provide adequate screening buffing uh, buff, uh, buffering for our landscape. Uh, have you been presented with a landscape plan for that property? Will you be presented with a landscape plan for that property? Well, we're not going to continue this hearing. This is going to be handled by the staff. And I'm, sh I'm sure that... Uh, Kathleen will make sure there's adequate screening. The reason I bring that up is because an, an existing property does not necessarily have to bring up its landscaping standards. We all know Bart Center is a mess and it would benefit greatly by some enhanced landscaping. And so I certainly encourage that regardless of whether it's one car repair shop or two car repair shop or it turns into a coffee shop, it doesn't matter. So the fact that the property and this is going to be leased, right? It's not being sold to this person. So that's up to the landlord, the owner of the property, to do the landscaping. And I don't know, you know, whether that can be enforced. I don't know, but I would certainly strongly encourage it, and I would deny this application as presented. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lindstrom. Anybody, anybody else here tonight? Mr. Lenica. Mr. Lenica, once again. Good evening again. My name is Joel Lenecker. I reside in 70 Hunting Town Road. I just have a, I just need a little bit of clarification. And one of the conditions of this, uh, not approval, but previous zoning board approval, previous zoning, zoning board of uh, zoning appeals, appeals uh, approval is that no sign, correct me if I'm wrong, no signs for sale will be allowed on this site, is that correct? So, you know, the big banner signs, cars for sale, things of that nature, no. Okay, okay so these these lovely um, fabric signs that look like feathers that line up Route 25 for years and years and years. I've been told in the past that they don't constitute a sign. And I've argued before that if you put words on something because if I have a sign attached to a building, I can have a colored panel, but as soon as I put my company name or any words on that, that board, it now becomes a sign, right? And then it's subject to the regs of how many uh, linear feet you can have in front and the side of the building. So my question is, is yes, they don't have to put up a for sale sign as we know it traditionally, but are we going to see those big old feather signs stick, sticking up there 
Are we going to see um, the lovely pennants and fringed mylar that has lettering on it strung from the utility pole to the building? The restriction says no banners. So I would assume those are banners, even if there's no name on it. So that will not be allowed. Okay, so no banners. No banners. But we can put up pennants and we can kind of up fringe mylar stuff no. dragged across the boat. That, that's a banner. We, we don't have a definition for banner in the regulations, but I would say that the spirit of that condition is in order to avoid exactly what you're talking about. And, you know, the airman, the, you know, right. waves. And the, the spirit, person. and I love that word when it comes to planning and zoning because it should supersede all of these, some of these little details that we get wrapped up into and in saying, what is the spirit of our reg to um, approve or not approve certain things? However, what mechanism will we have to enforce this going forward, not just this year, but five years from now? For the no banners, no signs. I mean, it's, a, it's part of the condition of approval with, from the Board of, uh, uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, right? Correct. But we don't enforce our signage regs now. Okay? So to the commission, I would urge you, we have a zoning enforcement officer. We need to start enforcing these regs. Or if we don't enforce them, then if I'm the person with the car lot, I'm gonna say, you didn't enforce any of this stuff. There's 25 of these, these feather signs right up and down Route 25. Why are you taking, telling me I have to take mine down? Sandwich boards, it seems every single business now has a sandwich board. Do we have a date on those sandwich boards where they got a permit for them before they're gonna go up and go down? We never do. You know what takes them down? The weather. So, I would really urge this commission to give advice to council, to council not, not uh, town council, but to council that if we're gonna talk about no signs, whatever, that we have, make sure we can enforce what we're saying. Because right now we don't enforce what we say regarding signage and banners. So that's my only recommendation and question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lennox. Do we have any other members of the public that would like to speak on this application tonight? Yes, in the back. Come on down. Name is uh, Dan Shelyovsky, uh, 12 Bar Road. I'm first Jason uh, House. Directed right behind this automotive repair, hopefully not to be. Um, last time there was mention of floor drains in that building and not knowing where they go. I don't know if anybody has hired a drain uh, technician or somebody to scope it out with a sonar tracer. Uh, we don't know where they go. And if they're not being clogged up, you know, filled with cement to prevent any kind of contamination. Uh, for all I know, you know, my property is contaminated with oil that I don't know about because his um, lot slopes upward towards Main Street and my house is lower, which was also the whole mention about runoff water going down the street and everything. Um, secondly, about um, foliage or fencing or something in the back of that property or maybe all the way around, I ran into the landlord, the owner of the property, um, a couple of days ago, and he had mentioned briefly something to me about putting up a fence around that lot. Uh, I don't know what the regulation for that is, but hopefully it's not just a chain link fence. And I'm hoping that it's higher than six feet. If not, then I would like to be granted on my property extension from six to at least eight foot for the adjacent perimeter in the back where the gun store is and alongside the automotive repair building because I'm sitting in my backyard and I certainly do not want to be looking at a graveyard of cars that I don't even know if we're going to get sold. The 13 cars is really pushing it from there. Um, another thing is safety. You know, there's a lot of people going around pulling door handles. I know that there's probably no valuables in these cars, but who knows? 
You know, I've already had to make a few calls to the police during the night because suspicious vehicles out in the parking lot that I see, I'm trying to go to sleep and there's a gun store there and there's a suspicious vehicle at midnight. You know, who knows what goes on? There's crazy people out there. Um, so I don't know if there's any details on any of that. Those comments on those items are on the list that yeah. will be addressed. Yeah, I'm just mentioning because, you know, if you plant little bushes, Chances are the business is going to go out of business by the time they get any kind of. I believe the uh, you know, applicant said he would be willing to put up a fence as well. Yeah. And I thought there was mention of no drainage. Correct. Yeah, there, just good. for clarification, we asked the same question. There yeah. is no floor drainage. If there was floor okay. drainage, they would have to design oil water separator, things of that nature. Um, but because they were not, yeah. we didn't need to follow through yeah. with that. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. And just an idea of fences, if you look at uh, Starbucks property right now, the fence yeah. around there is kind of what we've been requiring. So we're not changing. Thank you. Are there any other uh, members of the public here tonight that would like to comment on this application? Are there any members of the public online uh, that would like to comment on this application? Please raise your hand. Okay, seeing none then um, that's it for this application. Um, so technically it would be a continuation of the public hearing, but that's not gonna actually occur because the applicant um, not required. may withdraw the application, um, but we will talk to uh, the town attorney about some of the items that were raised tonight. Great, thank so the final um, public hearing tonight is ZCA slash RIA 2024-01515 and 517 Main Street. Now this is um, continued from 11824, and this is an application to establish the Special Development District, SDD number five. Um, do you want to explain the SDP issue? Sure. This point? Because under site development plan, we have at last meeting, we heard those two together, the SDP 2024. But there has been a legal opinion on that. And Kathleen can uh, let us in on that. So the current site development district process as written in the code designates that there shall be an SDD application. After that approval, there will be a submission that includes all of the items located in the special exception permit portion of the code. This, because of previous conversations with, with previous town staff and things of that nature, this was submitted as a site development plan. Um, we've got an opinion by legal counsel if that was able to be done because that's not how the precedent has been done in the past for some of the other applications that the Co Planning and Zoning Commission has seen. So I am going to read um, the town attorney's memo uh, just for the record. Uh, it is addressed to me, Kevin Gallagher, Planning and Zoning Administrator, January 31st, 2024. You have asked for clarification and opinion regarding the application and approval process for a special development district in SDD pursuant to section 5.5 of the Town of Monroe Zoning Regulations, specifically with regard to the following two inquiries. Is the SDD application a, a two-stage process? And if so, is, the, is a SDD applicant required to submit a special exception permit, SCP, pursuant okay. to section eight of the regulations? It is my opinion that the SDD application is a two-stage process to wit the submission and approval of the application and the subsequent submission and approval of the detailed plans, both to the commission, with one being a condition precedent to the other. It is my further opinion that an SDD applicant must follow all of the SEP procedures set forth in section 8.1 of the regulation. In rendering this opinion, I have reviewed the relevant portions of the regulations, specifically section 5.5.4 entitled approval of concept, provides an SCD applicant with a guidance and requirements on the first stage of the process, the initial application to the commission. The following section, section 5.5.5, provides guidance on the second stage of the process to with the approval of the detailed plans by the commission. 
Section 5.5.5A provides in pertinent part, after the approval of the application and schematic plans, the applicant shall file detailed plans for review by the commission. Therefore, Section 5.5.5.A clearly confirms a two-stage process to the commission. Section 5.5.5.D provides all required materials for a special exception application pursuant to Article 8 shall be included with the detailed plans. It is my opinion that this provision requires the second stage uh, of the process, submission of detailed plans to follow the SEP process in its entirety as set forth in Section 8, including without limitation submission of the SEP on the form prescribed by the Commission. If the regulations intended otherwise, they would have referred only to a specific subsection, therefore, and not the entirety of the article. I trust that this opinion answers your inquiries clearly and concisely. Um, if otherwise, please do not hesitate to contact me any further. So basically, he's saying that after step one, which is what is in front of you tonight as application RAA CZA 2024-01, once that's approved, the applicant needs to submit a special exception permit. Since they have submitted a site development plan, we are going to ask them to withdraw that application and submit an SEP. So the SEP will be in front of the commission um, once the application is in and we have time to notice for a public hearing. Um, however, because the conceptual site plans are part of the text um, change for the SDD, we will still continue to have them present that tonight. We're still happy to hear comments from the public as to that. Um, and if there's any uh, specific items, especially some of the... Um, comments by the town engineer or myself, we will put them as conditions uh, in the final approval, and then that will be addressed in the SCP process. Thank you, Kathleen. So tonight we're only going to hear the zone change, the establishment of the special design district, special development district. We're not going to be hearing the SDP, which is on the C side. Thank you. And for the applicant. For the record, uh, Jason Edwards, Edwards Associates, Engineer Surveyors, 227 Stephanie Road, Houston. Here with uh, the applicant, Tom uh, Giano, PC Ventures, and uh, Matt Pop, our landscape Also, we will be here for questions. Um, one fun question I have after I just said that is the commission, um, does the commission have to vote on the zone change before we can submit the SEP, or can that happen simultaneously? It just has to, the way we're gonna move forward is, is it just has to be approved prior to the approval of the SEP. Okay. So we're not gonna make you like record it with the town clerk because, you know, if for some reason you would want to withdraw the SEP application, you know, we understand that that process, you know, would be done at the same time because it's kind of heard together. Uh, so, Yes, the approval needs to be done, but you, I would be fine with you putting the application for the SEP prior to a final approval or resolution being voted. Uh, would, would the commission be able to vote tonight if they chose to? If the commission chose to, I have no exception to them voting on it tonight. Uh, just want to clear my, can I put my screen? Oh, yes. Uh, so again, this is a 515, 517 Main Street, uh, the proposal building that hasn't changed since we were here weeks ago. Uh, this is the rendering from Main Street. Um, when we were here last, there was questions both from the commission as well as, as public. Um, so I wanted to try to respond to those and answer any of those questions and concerns that we could. I think we've addressed all of them. Uh, this is just a uh, uh, some screen snips from the, the landscape plan, the, the latest landscape plan, which uh, not sure was actually submitted to you yet today, but it's going to be as part of the SEP application. Um, what we're going to do is add uh, this is the, the difference. We got 16 Arbor by days and six Norway spruce. Um, the Arbor by days are placed on both side property lines. Those are, you can see, there's these little clusters of two here. Let's see it on my screen. Yeah. And these little these little symbols here, I believe, are the uh, new R. Uh, yes, 
the new armor lighting, which are a place for screening. So they're throughout here. Um, and as I said, Matt Pop is on. If there's questions on that, I'll, I'll come back to this after I go through the rest of my presentation. Um, you also have some questions on the lighting. It's provided some more specifications. Now, these are on the plan that were submitted uh, previously. <coughs> you want to point them out. Uh, these are the specs on the, the landscape lighting notes here. A um, couple lights will be LED. They're going to be warm, soft lighting. 3000 K. And dark sky compliant, which means yeah. around 20. <coughs> and this is the model of light that's specified. And again, Matt Hopp can speak to more to this than I can. There is questions. Um, one of the other uh, items that was requested was a list of uh, I guess prohibited items that cannot be stored in the facility. So this is straight from the contract that the applicant uses in other facilities and which he plans to use for this as well. And it, it itemizes this typical prohibited items. I'm not going to read through all of them, uh, but uh, unless it's commissioner likely to. They're typical of combustible dust, explosive gases, flammable and combustible solids, flammable liquids, poisonous, corrosive, or fume hazard substances, any other item prohibited by lower ordinance. Again, it's, it's impossible to, to make people follow the laws, but they're going to put whatever they can in there for notice what they can. But they're not going to inspect every single thing that comes into the storage facility. Um, we also requested that we provide a rendering um, looking from the Starbucks drive through which is next door on the right side of this property, looking at the new facility. So uh, this would be the new buildings here. It's Tom Christiano. Tom Christiano, 127 South Main Street, Newtown. This is almost true. Where the dumpster is, there's actually a mound of rock that is on the property and some more trees. So if I didn't eliminate rock, you would not be able to see this. You would only see the top like two inches of, of the drawing. And I was trying to give you, I was trying to let you see what the building would look like. I didn't want to come back here tonight and show you just two inches on the top. So if you were standing back here, if I get closer to the end where the Starbucks makes the turn, the dumpster blocks a lot of the view of the, of the place. So I was trying to give you some shape of the building that is there. But if you go back there now, and when that is actually up, there's existing landscaping that will block 90% of the right side of it. And then the mound of rock almost blocks this front part. And this is, I try not to repeat myself, but you were not here, Kathy. And the owner of the Starbucks is me too. My group is part of that ownership. So I do own that property as well. So it would be that one, that one. And it's just Kevin uh, solely is destroying the corner lot. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just trying to give you perspective of that's the box. Where it is back. It's height. Larry could discuss more, which is in, in oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is the view, I guess. Uh, Tom's trying to say is that there's, there's we took some liberties with the rendering just to be able to show the building. There's actually a mound here of rock and, and trees that obscure some of this ledge. Are you telling you about? Or rock that's going to be removed. It's it's the, the, the remain. So he just removed it from the rendering so that the building. It's on the Starbucks property. It's on Starbucks, so it's not cleared. You're going to see the trees more so than the Um So there was also uh, some discussion uh, from uh, the owner of uh, 28 Freeman Lane. I can't read my own writing there. Um, uh, as to the view and the impact to the from from their property, which is up here on the top of the screen where the elevation is. Um, so what I did is I took a, a profile of the sight line. Um, so the actual ground floor of their house is down here uh, where that text is. So I, I assumed, okay, you can't see, you can see here that the profile goes up and then down. Sorry. Um, and then down again, and, and this is natural ground. We're not thinking to count any of the trees here. So this would just be ground level. So it comes up to a height of about 466, and then drops back down, and then comes up to, I think, about 462, and then it drops off. And this is where the existing home is that's to be removed. 
um, it's farther up the hill and considerably higher than, than what is proposed to be built. Um, so looking from the ground level, you, you really wouldn't even have a chance of seeing it. Like, essentially from the roof, you might be able to see the building, uh, but really from the, the second floor, approximately at an elevation about 468, so of course, it's two, you're going to be looking into the hillside uh, from the back of the center of their house. Uh, so I, I, in my opinion, there, there really shouldn't be much concern there. Um, also, I'm showing where, where our proposed plantings are. Uh, these will get up also provide additional barrier, but they're going to be looking through these rounds. I have much impact at all on their, their view. Um, and just to address a couple of other Concerned with blasting and excavation. Uh, the maximum cut in the back of this is, the, is about nine feet, and that's going to be. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Just want to make sure you know um, and that's going to be generally in this area back here where the existing house is. So there's also foundation there already. So some of that's already excavated for that foundation. So you're going to have some removal here, but then you're going to have a fill in the front. Um, in the end, we. we we estimate the, the cuts and fills to be fairly balanced. We're within about 100 cubic yards by our calculations. So, um, you know, that's the, the limit of the blasting. You know, it's impossible to say now, but we're only going down, you know, nine feet. It's not going to be a significant, we're not talking about a mine. It's, it's down nine feet from the surface. And it's really only in this rear. Um, and any blasting that's done is effectively regulated by the fire marshal or the fire department and will be done in compliance with their regulations. Uh, in accordance with their, their guidelines. Um, uh, there's also some questions just on the, the emergency vehicle uh, paths. And this is was in the plans last time. I, I missed it when I was doing that project. But we do have a fire engine path, and this is the standard fire engine from Peru. I don't know the model, but uh, I think by there. Um, and it has been, uh, my knowledge has been released by the fire department. So they have that has been provided. I believe that was the extent of the, the comments that I um, that we had responded to. Sidewalk, I believe. There will be a sidewalk in front. Of I, there, I don't believe there's sidewalk in front of Starbucks now, is there? Um, no, not so. As of now, we're not proposing that. It's not on this property. Signage. Uh, we're going to have to make that part of the special exception. There's going to be a monument sign out front, but we don't know exactly the size. Uh, it'll be in compliance with the regulations. Commissioners, let's start with Commissioner. All right. <clears throat> a few questions. Um, so I did go out today to do a site visit, and I want to thank the Harris's for letting me come out and, and view their property. If you could go back to the previous for me. This one? Yes. So if I had looked at this and not gone out, my perception would have been the same, that there's no impact to them. However, when they're standing in their house at four, what is it, 450 something? 452. Yeah. That hill is their backyard going up. Yeah. Where it comes down a little bit is where their children play. That's still a usable backyard for them. So is that just for fun? Um, after the first, after the, the first big bump, there's a trampoline here. Is about where the first yeah, that's where their actual backyard is. That's where their kids play. That's where they have their picnics. That's where they they spend their time. So the view would be from up at this peak, is what you're saying. The view is no down further, this right there, and right along that wall. I looked out, and you could see everything. So putting trees down at 440 is going to do absolutely nothing. They're going to look right over those trees and still see that building sitting there. Um, so, uh, not sorry, to yeah, no. So that was my observation. Um, I also, so I don't, I didn't talk to them about like screening any of that, but like I would much rather have screening where their actual property line is, because where it is now is going to do nothing. They, it's going to not. They're going to look right over it. Um, I also have a question about the, is it, <laughs> bear with me. So we're doing an SEP now, not an SDD? Correct. We're doing the, <laughs> the SDD. 
just a change of zone. We're not doing the SE. Okay, but you're technically not hearing it tonight. So okay. the things that are being discussed, yeah. I'm going to put as conditions of the approval that during the SEP process, they okay. need to address, you know, this list that both the commission and myself and the town engineer um, have provided, and then uh, they'll address it when they come back to the board as part of the SEP. So this part we're doing now too is, if we approve this, it's approving turning that residential into a different Correct. zone? Correct. It's approving the site development district and the standard use and bulk regulations that were submitted. Do you have a picture of where, right, because I don't have it with me tonight, where the residential and where RF1 is now? I have them. Yes. And I apologize. I couldn't carry all my stuff in with my program. Oh. Zone so line that was right to the existing home right there. So the house, the existing house strap line. Right. Which exists, which there's two on the property. One, one of the rear, the one on the top of the hill in the back. That's closest to the rear line. So there's a driveway that comes from the side. Yeah. The zone line bisects the house. So the house was right on the zone. So the, the newer house, I'm going to call it. Yes, it would be the newer house, yeah. The zone goes right through the building. It does. Interesting. Okay. So the proposed application, what crosses that zone boundary is a portion of the turnaround for the driveway. So all of the building and all of the parking is currently located in, in not in the residential zone. The only thing that's located in the residential zone is that little, that little turnaround at the top. See the, uh, the gray line is the zone line. Yeah. This is the existing home in the photo. Our post is the color here, so the building would be quite a ways in front of that. The rest of it's in the existing B1 zone, but the okay. SDD, the site development district, will be applied to the entire lot. Okay, all right. Um, no other questions at the moment, but okay. I was there for you to get back. Um, Looking at that last slide that you had up here, would there be a way to, to stabilize the soil at that second drop off um, enough to you know properly support screening um, due to its steep grade? Yeah, but here, well, uh, one thing I, I believe that's on that's wooded. So um, am I correct there? Or is that yard? Better than, uh, exactly where the property line ends. What did you see? There's not a lot of trees there. It's, it's, I, there's not a lot of trees no. there at all. I mean, it's the property line is here. This is the heavy line here at the property line. So, I mean, it, we'd have to explore it or we could look at putting something up there. And I don't think the yeah, applicant would be opposed to it. As long as the grade doesn't prevent it. Yeah, it's, we're going to have to figure it out. Screening should function. So, that yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, it's actually it's smart on our side to play some. It makes sense. I mean, yeah. they, yeah. Would, you, would you be open to putting something? Property I, I would. Yeah. That'd be a good consideration. Yeah. We'll certainly keep that in mind. Have a better chance of surviving and everything yeah, else. Function. And as far as the um, the nine foot cuts, uh, you know, is there any chance that those could be made mechanically? We can. They're certainly going to make every effort to, but I don't want to guarantee that right. they can because if they can't think that down, the plan doesn't work. So we really have to reserve that right to be able to blast if we need to. Yeah. I do not think there's going to be a considerable amount of blast here. No, obviously not, but it'd be good if they didn't have to do it. I agree, but I, I just can't make that guarantee. Right. That's all I have. On the, the fire truck thing, mm -hmm. that's the biggest truck that we have here? That you uh, have I'll have to check on that. I believe, I don't know if it's the biggest truck, but it's the one that the fire department right. wires us to run that truck. I yeah, according to the fire marshal, what he requests is a 40 foot ladder truck that is one straight truck. So it doesn't have like the trailer that pivots. Um, and they submitted a cut sheet of the truck that they used, and that was acceptable. Yeah, so it's the, it's the, I think the, the actual longer truck makes a tighter turn because it's got 70. Right. So the 40 foot lock truck that is a one that's harder one. Okay. Um, I think everybody else had Um, if the driveway weren't to be that turnaround in the back, but instead were to wrap around the building, 
uh, falling out of that zone, what would change with the what they would need to do if that were even possible? I don't yeah, think that, that's a problem because the grade becomes steep back there on the other side of the building, so you can't meet the more blasting. Yeah, and you're gonna have more excavation, and I don't know if we can meet the standards of the driveway grades. You know, that I think it's a maximum of ten percent that we can have to verify that we'd be in excess of that. For, for a lot of that's all for now. Question. Um, as far as the lighting, <clears throat> um, will that go off at a certain time or it'll be on 24 7? Typically, it'd be on at night. No, when it's dark. That is generally, generally what is requested by the piece and everything. Like general, what we could put its low and its down by the yes. Um, all right, and it seems like this back building is going to be seen, even though it's just a little bit from the side and from the other street. I mean, I understand it's a bigger expense, but why not just make the the back building a little bit nicer? Sort of what the front one is, just a suggestion. And also, since you own the other property near Starbucks, why not extend the sidewalk all the way through? So the town's goal is to eventually have connecting sidewalks. The sidewalk part is uh, a goal of ours anyway. So you know, the spirit of what the town is trying to accomplish and what we want to happen, I don't think that's a problem. I don't understand um, I don't understand the procedures on how to do that because it's a different entity that owns that, but obviously it's still maintenance. So it's, it's not a problem, but I don't know how to do that in application form. I, I can't speak for that. But it, it wouldn't be something that would be approved as part of yeah. the text regulation, but it's something we can look into for yeah. the SCP. I want to be good neighbors, and so it's not a, that would not be an issue. How do you make the building in the back in the rendering? Look pretty. I was just trying to give it a shape so that people could understand what it looks like. But it, it doesn't look, it's not awful <laughs> as it is. So, so yeah, that's what I'm saying. And it's hard to do. There's still a business model. And to make the investment that we are in the front, um, it's impossible to even come close to make the investment in the back. It becomes, it just becomes possible. Um, and that was part of the goal of the front building and the cost of it, making the height it is, it's artificially higher to hide the building, you know, and, and that's where we made our investment. I am, you know, I think I'm following not just the regulations, but the spirit of the Architectural Review Board and, and this body to try and deliver something that really exceeds, you know, the bare minimum. And I think we've done that in this project. It just makes it hard. That front facade, um, you, know, you know, it's it's like seven, eight hundred thousand dollars. I mean, so it's not a, it's not like hey, it's a hundred grand and I can make this all work. It's just it's a very big, impactful piece to work to the project. And again, it wasn't done. It was done because I would, I want a nice looking building. We want to have the best storage place in town. Pete, we also just again want to follow the spirit. What's happening in that little area? So, as much as I'd like to deal with the back, and I, I just, I, it would be very hard to do. That's all. But again, it, it, it's a grave. It's going to be blended away. The only people that are really going to see it from that the front side, which is going to be twenty-two feet tall, like people are buying in storage place that are going to the second floor. Up in the back, it's twelve feet high. You know, so. When you're up in the back and you're looking from neighbors to Farm Hill, they will see the roof and they're going to see the back, uh, the back of the building's 12 feet. Customers will see the during between the two buildings. That's, that's just part of it. I hope I answered your questions. And I'm not opposed to working out with some any neighbor when it relates to screening, spending num spending money that's 30 feet down the hill. It's not helping anybody. I just wanted to do whatever's right. Working with them is fine. Jason Edwards, uh, just one comment on the sidewalk is 
those sidewalks are all, uh, they have to be approved by DOT as well, because that's in DOT's right away. So we're happy to do them as long as DOT. That's Connecticut DOT. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? No, nothing. Um, there were several exhibits that were added to the application, including the ITE parking uh, by attorney Dominic Thomas uh, that uh, was submitted 1-8-2024. Uh, uh, we also received uh, a revised statement of use um, from the applicant um, previously. My only comment to that is that it's now referencing an older version of the plan. So we would just want that to be revised prior to approval, but it's a minor comment. And that comment is included in my updated planning and zoning report, uh, which was issued um, 1-30-2024. I am going to go through the exhibits that were part of the site development plan, even though we're not hearing that because I do just <clears throat> want to make sure they're part of the record as they will be part of the conditions for the, the next item. Uh, we did receive an abutters letter and video uh, by Sarah Harris, who is here tonight and can speak on her behalf. If she would like me to read her letter, I'm happy to do so, but I do know that she is in attendance tonight. And then we did get an engineering comment, an engineer comment letter um, from the town engineer. Um, he had some additional comments, but again, all of that will be able to be worked through during the uh, special exception permit process. And we would just ask the applicant, they take a look at that um, and update prior to the, to the next approval. Um, we have the attorney letter has, as previously noted as part of the um, conditions and then a planning zoning administrative report by myself. Uh, what I've talked about is mostly what has already been talked about here tonight. Um, if the applicant is going to blast, you need to provide a blasting permit as part of the SEP application. Um, and just for comment, uh, just for public understanding, as was mentioned, a blasting permit is granted by the fire marshal. There is noticing that's required as part of that. Um, there is uh, letters would be sent out, you know, letting the neighbors know that blasting will be conducted on site. Um, as was mentioned, the applicant should provide a narrative as the materials that will be prohibited within the facility. And that's going to have to be included in the applicant's contract with its tenants. Signage, which was already discussed about, if it's um, being proposed, it needs to meet the town of Monroe regulations. Uh, the fire truck maneuvering plan, uh, we just have to make sure that doesn't overlap with the actual parking spaces that's proposed. Um, and accessible curb ramps uh, that are currently uh, not shown on the site. I just want to make sure all those locations are noted on the site plans. But again, all of that can be done during the SCP application process. Um, one question I have for the landscape architect is the, the Conservation Commission, they did issue a memo. And just if any of those comments were included in an update um, for the landscaping plan. Matthew, uh, Matthew Pop, landscape architect. I am on, I think they wanted uh, the straight street, straight cultivars. I mean, they didn't want the cultivars, so we have the straight species. So that was incorporated to the plan. Excellent. Thank you. Does that conclude your comments? That concludes my comments. Yes. Thank you. We'll go to um, the public next. <clears throat> to any members of the public here tonight that would like to comment on this particular application, please raise your hand. Okay. I would like to speak. All right, well, who, who uh, <laughs> the person online, go yes. ahead. Name and address for the record, please. Sure. My name is Kelly Hengis Carano, 19 Shoals Road. And I have a question. Um, what percentage of the plants are going to be native? I know that there was some discussion of that, and there has been a lot of discussion on that on the Monroe Residence Facebook page. And as a Connecticut State Master Gardener, I'm interested in the percentage of plants that will be native. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Anyone else online uh, that has any questions or would like to address the commission, please raise your hand. Okay, I think that was it. In person. We have Mr. Lanica. Would you like to come forward? Uh, 
<clears throat> uh, Joel Lenneker, 70 Huntingtown Road, uh, Monroe. Uh, just need a couple clarifications on the zone change. It's my understanding that there are two parcels that we are looking at, or is there one parcel? One parcel. There is one parcel, which the path, what I'm going to call the back part, the part of butts the neighbors is zoned different from the front half. It's split zone parcel. So it's a split zone parcel. Yeah. So what we're asking, what the commission's going to be uh, discussing is to change the zone for that one por portion of it so that the entire parcel is now what zone? It's going to be a SDT, which is a um, district. So it's sort of an overlay. Got it. I understand what an overlay district is. I get that. Um, so so then this parcels or the one parcel with the two different zoning designations will become part of the SDT. Got it. Um, so from a planning perspective, do we believe that this is the right use for this, that this business is the right use in this zone? even though it's permitted, and I understand we cannot, you know, pick and choose when it's permitted, when it's not permitted, I get that. I'm just asking the more esoteric question about planning for the area, um, given Route 25 single lanes each way, um, just something for consideration. Uh, and then for the next hearing, which is I presume takes care of lighting, um, if they could just help if, for the street lights, if they would just include um, the beam spread or the, the light spread so we know how far out from those poles these uh, fixtures are projecting. Also, it's the same for the uh, wall-mounted fixtures as well. And I, if I heard it correctly, the lights will be on at, as long as it's dark. So that's, to me, is that the lights will be on from sunset to sunrise. So just to clarificate, specific clarification to that. Regarding the front building, I did ask at the last meeting about um, evergreen in the front. Uh, I know that there is a young woman who just asked about native species. I see that Arbor Vitae has been included on the side. That is not a native species, but I am also of the opinion that you can use a mix of native species as well as non-native if it's gonna enhance the property via either screening or from uh, street aesthetic. I would ask that the front has no, has simple little shrubbies sitting there for evergreen, that we really need something more than just trees that may bloom look beautiful. And I think that's great. It's going to be part of that whole environment that if you walk Route 25, we have luckily gotten people to put in uh, flowering trees that flower about the same time. Little variety of color looks beautiful as you come down through there. So hats off to that. Um, but then when we no longer have leaves on our trees, then we have sticks, as I call it, stick weather, it might be nice to have some evergreen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Just name and address for the record. Hi, Sarah Harris, 26 Friedman Lane. Uh, thank you again. Thank you, uh, Ms. Lovell, for coming to my house today. And thank you for the comments uh, made in support of the impact that we would feel at my property at 26 Friedman. My husband is here with me. My children are at home with the babysitter. Um, and we're all concerned about the view, obviously, most personally speaking, is the view, the lighting, the blasting, the, the impacts that we will feel as a homeowner um, that are that continue to be a concern. Um, and that's why I understand the change in the the agenda for today is really focusing on the SDD. And um, so I want to just, you know, maybe put aside my own personal qualms and focus on what's being asked today, which is this designation. Um, and I understand that the second house has this split zoning, um, but I just don't understand the desire or the need to have more commercial space in this, in this spot. Um, why extend, why two buildings, why such a massive structure? Um, it was mentioned earlier that there's a, there was some commentary on Facebook a couple of days ago when I last looked, there was approaching 50 comments. I did not see one in support of a storage facility. Um, I saw a lot of commentary about, we want retail there. 
Um, this is Main Street. This is a shopping. This is the shopping part of Main Street that we enjoy. This is our small town. When you drive in at the corner, coming from East and Newtown Monroe, it's quaint. It's cute. It's nice, and um, and it's it's what makes our area special. It's not the part of town that was meant for massive commercial development. Miss um, Harrington is here. Um, she also made the comment on, on social media and to me that, that, that this sort of development was envisioned years ago for Pepper Street, um, not for right here. Um, so I don't see a desire in the community from the commentary, from the people I know, from what I've heard. And I'm pretty sure you can imagine that the desire for a storage facility just isn't that strong. So why, why do we have to consider this right now? Um, why the expansion to bring this business here? Is it is it really worth having this new the two new structures that again cannot be undone? Once they're there, they're there. Um, this past weekend, my husband and I drove out to Queens, drove through the Bronx, saw <laughs> I counted at least ten storage facilities, and I just see it as this oversaturated market. And you know, I see on social media uh, free giveaways. People want to give their items to each other. Um, there's a trend to reuse what we have. People are buying less. They're trying to make do with what they have and not consume so much waste. Why do we want a storage facility? I don't see this business uh, being sustainable. I don't see these two buildings and people in our town wanting to store furniture for, you know, getting to contracts that they can't get out of because their furniture is in there. Um, I, just, I just don't see, you know, Nice concessions. This is great. Now we, you know, I heard a little bit more information about lighting, about screening. It makes me feel a little bit better. That's great. But I know that those are those sorts of concessions are a cost of doing business. And if we don't ask, then we won't see it. But they, the developer knows they've got an extra hundred, two hundred thousand in there for these sorts of things that come up just to make the deal go through. If it's not them, it's going to be someone else who will do the same thing. So why do we have to settle for this? Um, so that's that, that's really where I'm standing. Um, it, it, the home again, it's a nice home. Um, two homes that we'd be proposing, um, one of which I know has a renter inside. Um, so again, you know, I just I think I'll stop right there. Um, just really, you know, it's the utility of it. It's the utility of the proposal. Is it really necessary to, to take up this amount of space for a storage facility right in between Starbucks, right in between Testos? right across from retail. That's it, thank you. Thank you, Sarah Harris. Please come down and uh, just state your name and address for the record. Sure, my name is Thomas Harris. I'm uh, Mrs. Harris is our husband, 26 Friedman Lane, and thank you, Nicole, for coming out uh, to see the property today. Uh, really, um, it's a wonderful proposal. It looks great structurally um, from the front. Uh, it's a lot better than staring at Taylor uh, tool shed or whatever that was for many years. Um, you know, being in, in business myself, I encourage business. I think it's great um, if a developer wants to take a chance and do this thing. That's great. Um, the thing that bothers me most is that from the back of that property. To the back of my line, it's about the distance between that wall and that wall, give or take. That's what bothers me. We have, our, we have our gardens back there. The kids play back there. You saw the steepness of the hill. Um, it's a only black area for them to play on the property. The front, the side yard is of really little use to us. And so we really utilize the backyard. So stepping, stepping to the backyard on the line of the, of the property, I can see all of it. Um, so yeah, I know that aesthetically, um, from a business perspective, we not, may not be able to spend $7,800,000 uh, demonstrated here on the front, but we'll be the one stuck looking at the back. Um, and, and when I say to you, it's, it's um, currently, we could see the entire house that, that's up for discussion. Um, it's, but it's a home, right? Uh, now we're looking at seeing a huge box. I know it's been said, I just really want to give you a great idea of what it really looks like. It's, it's, it's completely exposed. So I think even the shrubbery is there, 
Um, I do recognize that it would be a little lower and they address this than the current rooftop that we're seeing. But even from my daughter's room, we could actually see, we could see that structure. Now, what they're proposing is we may not be able to see it from the height of the, the deck or, 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 or my daughter's room, but from the back, it will certainly, certainly open. Um, so we're changing the dynamic there. We moved here um, to have a home. We love the area. We love the feel of the area. We love the fact that there's Starbucks there. I have you to thank for that. Um, and it's, it's great. It'd be nice if sidewalks would connect all the businesses. That, that's all wonderful. But now to remove an exist, two existing homes um, and to change the whole dynamic of it, we have support from our neighbors here. It would be affecting them as well. Um, and it actually goes further in from the, uh, let's say, the commercial line of, of Main Street. Um, because uh, where Stanley is, it's actually maybe an acre or two acres up to our property line. So you see how far it's coming up from the main. So unless you see it, you really don't understand um, really the effect of it. So I ask you to, to uh, help us come to some resolve about this. And I just want it to be known, uh, when you buy a home, you intend to leave it for your family, for your kids, you intend to stay there, at our ages, we don't intend to move around. We have two young kids. We are, we're cemented in the neighborhood. Our children go to school in the neighborhood. We intend to stay here and raise a family here. This would really drastically alter all of those plans. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Do we have anyone else here tonight that would like to address the commission on this application? Anyone online would like to address the commission? Yeah. Oh. Mrs. Ms. Lindstrom, come forward, please. Uh, Kathy Lindstrom, 298, can you This is a fast question. <clears throat> Uh, and it's, it's not exactly not germane, but it's kind of germane. The ARB, the Architectural Review Board, do the recommendations that are made by the Architectural Review Board become a part of the final approval of the Planning and Zoning Commission? The recommendations become part of the approval. Right. If, if, if the ARB says we would like to change these lights or change the materials, and that information is presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission. And the Planning and Zoning Commission says, yes, we think the ARB made a good recommendations. Does that become part of the final approval? Yes, if we agree. If and so, they, so, they, so the, although the ARB is advisory, once those recommendations are accepted, they become part of the... If final. we make them conditions of approval, yes. Right. And those conditions should be available um, in town hall. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Do we have someone else that's interested in? Uh, no? Yes? Come forward. Dan Shlegowski, 12 Mart Road, uh, Monero Asylum, about a quarter mile from this uh, parcel of land. And I don't know, it's kind of, you know, the old saying of like time and place for everything. And then with businesses, it's like location, location, location. You know, this is, um, I don't know, it's, I, I feel like it's not the right spot for it. I get like that it's on the main road. And you want to like advertise in there and appeal for people to come store their items, but I don't think it's the right like Lego piece to put right there. Um, with that being said, I noticed that there's some lots further down Main Street um, that are cleared and woods and whatever. You know, that's a little bit more approaching, like past Pepper Street and Townline Auto Body Pass there up the hill, there's a few abandoned businesses. Maybe that's a little bit more better. Pepper Street, somewhere industrial where there's already a storage place. <clears throat> um, that being said as well, you know, what if this 
storage facility fails down the road, now we're stuck with two humongous buildings. And what's going to happen with that? Someone's going to come in and demolish that and do what? Someone's going to come in here with an exception wanting to make some kind of a factory out of it or something, you know? And then we're also running into neighboring residential lots and everything else. So I don't know if it's the right, you know, spot for it. I appreciate it looking very nice and everything else, but, I, you know, I don't think it's the right spot for it. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else? Yes, come up forward, please. Just name and address for the record. Linda Harrington, 303 Stanley Road. Uh, I agree with everyone. I really don't think this is the best location for a storage facility. I work in Bridgeport and I'm on I-95 and I see storage facilities now that are empty. Uh, and my cousin owns a storage facility in Wallingford and it's not doing well right now. Um, we have a beautiful town. We have a beautiful green. Uh, we have Save Our Stephanie. We uh, made it, our town green was beautiful this year. It was lit up. Uh, we have Testos coming in. We have a beautiful, vibrant community. And we're so like a little country. And uh, I just don't see a, a facility like this uh, in the row. So, thank you. For your comments. Do we have anyone else here tonight that would like to address the commission? Uh, anyone online that would like to address the commission? Okay, if not, then it's back to the applicant. If you have any um, responses, if you care to address any of the just comments. Just for the record, Jason Edwards, um, just wanted to kind of reiterate that this is an abandoned uh, business now. It's an empty building. Um, what we're proposing is going to be a vast improvement the streetscape of, of this area, in my opinion. It's going to be an improvement to the, to the, to the corridor. Um, oh, and, and additionally, we, you know, my, my client, the applicant, is willing to work with neighbors on screening uh, and we're happy to keep that <clears throat> sufficient to uh, hopefully work out any uh, concerns. Okay. okay. I'd like to go to the commissioners for any last questions. There was someone online that was trying to speak, but yes. you can't get unmuted. Oh. Uh, 414. Uh, hi. Okay. Can you hear me now? Thank you, Nicole. You're welcome. Hi. This is Julie Avellino, 21 Crescent Place. Hi. So I general, you know, in general, I concur with everything that's been said tonight, but we can't really focus on the viability of someone's business plan. But I think what we can focus on is that the Taylor rental space is zoned currently as mixed use. And as a town, we have a strong need for housing that is available for the one bedroom consumer. That area to tear down existing housing when we have such a struggle with affordable housing to begin with, and then to take it away out of our few parcels that are available for mixed use where we could have a beautiful shopping center at the bottom, some affordable, uh, maybe senior units on top or one bedrooms that don't impact the school district on top would be a terrible waste of a very, very limited resource that we have in this town. We have Pepper Street. We have all the streets off of Cambridge to put storage units. Whether or not this person with the application, I apologize, I don't know your name, wants to participate in what is in fact a multi-billion dollar industry storage unit that's kind of the only sure bet around in terms of commercial real estate development right now is up to him. But it's up to us to make use of very, very limited resources. So while I feel for the family behind the old Taylor rental space, we also as a town, whether we're on the 25 side or the 111 side, have so few options for getting this right Putting a storage facility in this spot will forever make it wrong. And you could put a sidewalk in front of it. It will do absolutely nothing because there will be no pedestrians to enjoy the beautiful commercial zone that we have the opportunity to revive and revitalize there at the corner of Stepney. 
So that's all I'd like to say. Consider what it's known for now. Mixed use is very, very important. Taking that away for storage units is not what this town needs. Thank you for your comments. That's it for the comments. Anyone else? No? Okay. All right, so we... I got one more thing, uh, just in response to that. Um, one, I'm not sure that that is zoned for mixed use. I have to confirm that, but I don't believe it is. Um, it's too small. I yeah, I don't think it meets the acreage requirements. I think you need 15 acres to do that. Um, and we did, uh, the applicant did explore uh, doing multifamily mixed use here uh, from a septic perspective. The soils are not suitable for that. Uh, you couldn't get enough units in there to make it justifiable. Um, so we did look at that. Um, and one other request from the applicant is if the commission feels they are able to, we would request that you vote on this tonight so that we can be prepared to move forward with the SCP application. Thank you. Okay, then we're back to the commission. Any last questions? before we close the hearing. Kathleen, you are good? I'm okay. Would like to close the hearing? Yes, please. Uh, we will close the hearing. Thank you, everyone. And that's it for um, um, public hearings tonight. As Kathleen mentioned, the site development plan is going to be um, withdrawn, I believe. And the SEP will be forthcoming. So we're moving on now to deliberations and determinations. Um, so we can deliberate on this application if uh, you're all ready to do that. Yes? Okay. Yeah. So the chair will entertain a motion to uh, approve. I'll make a motion to approve ZCA slash RAA 2024-01. File number 10273. I have a motion. I need a second. I'll second. Motion and a second. All right. So let's discuss this application. So right now there's an abandoned uh, commercial building there. Uh, we see that they are improving a lot. This is also a low impact use for a small two lane highway. It's not a high traffic generator. I believe the applicant is willing to um, do screening even on the um, adjacent property on its property. If um, they're amenable to that, the question I have about this is: if we were just to go and approve zone change, yeah. correct? Okay, not that structure. doesn't mean that this application is going to stay the same. Correct. Yeah, all this does so, is allow us to start looking at this as a special design district. And the issue that I have is when we first did this, that we would be able to approve. The site change in the application at the same time. But now know. we don't have that choice no more. No, that was a mistake so, when we thought we could do it that way. And apparently the uh, attorney has. We can add that. Have, huh? We can add that to the list for the subcommittee for the regulation subcommittee to look at. Right, the way that the problem I have with it, the, the only problem I have with it is that once we approve the zone change, this application you know, to move forward. And anybody can bring any application in. It can change it. Still. Yes. So okay. still, because of the tool. What's that? Yeah. You still have to approve it. Well, we have to do our best. Right. Because this tool I mean, we're using we allows us to we control. It is literally, it was zoned for one thing, and we're changing the zone. So there are other things that can go there. So we don't have that choice anymore to change. You understand what I'm saying? So that's that's the issue I have with doing it this way. I don't. I thought when we did this in the subcommittee, we we're going to look at the application. It's going to be all one, everything together. And I don't want to approve a zone change without knowing. And I'm I'm sure this is what he's going to do, but without having it all together. But well, if they were to, if we were to approve both. 
right? The zone change, that happens immediately and a site development plan. And then five years later, they don't do anything on the property. They come back and say, we want to develop this instead. We didn't do the prior approval. What's to prevent that? Well, that's right? what I'm saying is it's that- the, I, I would, together. Uh, we can't write a regulation that would allow us that if, if this, if the site plan and the zone change didn't go together, that the property would go back to what it originally was. We can do that. We do that. Uh, right? there, that's what we should be doing. I'm not disagreeing with any of your opinions. I'm just saying that as it's currently written, it's a two-part process. They have to file the SCP within, I think, six months um, of the original STD application because although it's written as a two-part process, it is supposed to be quick because of exactly what you're saying. The idea is that the SCP is being presented as in relationship to what you just approved from a zoning change. But so, once we change the zone, zones change, right? We have to... Once they record it right. on the, at the town land record, on land record stands, then we it's, can't take that zone away unless we decide to change. Correct. That's, that's the only problem I have this way. It doesn't work out for me. Change because uh, yeah. I have a question on the um, current reg for SDD 1.5.3. It says, from my interpretation, not an attorney, um, that it, residential can't be combined as part of that. Hold on one moment. So okay. What are you looking at? 1.9.3 for the SDD. It says, I that I read in it that residential cannot be used to combine into SDD. You're not talking, you're talking about lots and more than one zoning district? Uh, 1.9.3 is lots and more than one zoning district, mm -hmm. which deals with the split zone lot, which is applicable to this. It is, okay. So I thought I read some more about residential. Sorry, guys. Okay. Maybe it was an old. I don't know. So, an old so reg that hadn't has been updated since. So lots of more than one zoning district. There is a portion of the regulations, which is 1.9.3, that talks about if you have a property in a split zone lot. And basically what it's saying is the use density and other development or standards and requirements of these regulations not included in subsection B shall be that as required for the respective zoning district classified. So basically what it's saying is anything in the B1 zone has to comply with that. Anything in the R1 zone has to comply with that. So you couldn't okay. have parking or part of the building or septic on the R1 portion of the zone. However, the standards of any overlay district shall apply uniformly over the area designated by the overlay zoning district. So although the underlying districts still comply, if they have not been changed as part of the SDD zoning district, the actual district applies over to the entire parcel, even if it's a split zone lot. Um, so that's just the one portion of the section which is applicable to, to this property. Okay. So my thoughts, you know, are gonna be taking into consideration that this, you know, go to fruition all the way around, not necessarily just the zone change. Um, looking at it from a whole, you know, like you said, Mike, it's a low impact project with, with very low um, water use, traffic, energy, and noise. Um, I feel like the project will likely increase, increase tax revenue. It'll look much better than what's there now. And it'll be uh, offering the community a, a usable service. Now, as far as the cons are concerned, you know, we've talked about the oversaturation of the market of storage. We're going to have to find out and let the market sort that out as it always does. Um, and at that point, um, I, you know, we've brought up this question of subcommittee and we've discussed it at length about the possibility of this business not, you know, succeeding. And, you know, according to market analysis studies, you know, it's, it's proving that 
you know, developers are expanding in that area. And I don't think anybody wants to invest money in a business that they are being told is going to fail. So I think that we need to kind of let, uh, lean on the, uh, on the studies and, and hope that everything goes well. And I think that presenting a nice product as you have, um, I think you got a much better chance of it succeeding than some of the other big box facilities that we're seeing in other locations. I think it does fit if Monroe were to put a visible cell storage, it would look like this. So I think it, it, it was well designed and is it the perfect spot in town? I don't think it's the perfect spot, but I don't think it doesn't work either. So, and I don't like what's going on over there now. Um, another con, and I've, I've heard your, your, you know, your story, and I, I totally agree. You know, your, your land is backing up to an area that is potentially developable. And uh, I know that there's a zone change, which is making it more developable than what you had originally considered, but that is Main Street and things can happen over there. And I think we've made some considerations for that with the, um, with the screening. And you also have to take into consideration the fact that other things could go up there that are gonna be much more intrusive on your lifestyle. More noise, more lights, more people, more crime. This is a secured area and I believe it's low impact. So for those reasons, I don't think it's a bad idea. Any other comments? Discussion. So I think it's important to note that yes, we can look at what they what they want to put in here. Uh, but right now, all we need for the thing is the zone change. Uh, with that in mind, the future project that's going to come in front of us, we will still have a lot of growth or you know ability to to change and adjust what comes in front of us. Whether that be requiring extra screening, native plants, even though that tends to be counterintuitive to screening. Um, which is why, for the record, there's no regulation on native plants in our zoning right now. <clears throat> um, but I like to think that the applicant has heard a lot today from and the previous thing from the neighbors. They, uh, there are also neighbors to this themselves. So, you know, we had the view from Starbucks. Uh, hopefully, when they come in front of us with the plan, they continue to really consider the concerns of the neighbors. Uh, so it can come in front of us and be something we can uh, approve if that's what we eventually decide. Um, but yeah, for the actual zone change, I think it gives us a lot more ability to change what and control what ends up going on with Taylor rental. If this weren't to be approved, it's current zone. Yes, it would be further from the property, but a lot, as you mentioned, could go in on that Taylor rental property as is right now that Oh, well, it was done in this zone somewhere else. It has to be allowed there. With the SDD, we have a lot of control where it stands alone. We get to decide. We don't have to say, well, in a different SDD, we allow this. That's not how this zoning tool works. So I would be in favor of approving this uh, zone change for the fact that it gives us more control on the set. And piggybacking off of what you said, I think also in the spirit of managing expectations, having that leeway, there is also obviously a business plan here and, and considering that, you know, maybe we're going to tell them to, to get rid of that back building. I don't think that works with the business plan. So I don't think that that is even a consideration. So we do have some room. We do have uh, some more tools to, to try to make sure everything goes the way we want it to, but I don't think you're going to minimize the amount of units that are going in there under this particular plan. Now it sounds like financially, if we were to say no back building, then that front facade is going to be, cheap orange boxes that right. we absolutely want to avoid because the fact that they have the more units allows them to do something. So it is a lot of He can't talk. Oh, any other one? Well, sorry about you. <laughs> Discussion? He can't. Uh, the, like I said, the only issue I have with this is that I'm not bungling. I'm not bungling because, you know, yeah, we can if it comes in front of us and we deny it for some reason and it goes to court, we could lose in court. They change the whole plan. That's the problem I have with changing the zone that we're not changing the whole thing. Because am I right? I'm, they could come in with a different plan and we could say, well, we don't like that plan and deny it. But if it meets the criteria and end up in, take us to court and we can end up Losing in court, right? The way that it's written, 
and I would, I would have to look it up. But the intent yes. of the way that it's written is that they're coming in with conceptual plans. Right. The SEP application is them coming in with the detailed plans right. of the conceptual plans. Right. Part of the reason they present the kept conceptual plans and you have this discussion right. is because the idea is not that they come in and change everything. You are approving this with the conceptual plans as presented. So yes, you can require more screening. You could maybe give it an adjustment. No, but I, the only thing I was worried about is that if we approve it, right? If we approve the thing, you know, and, I, and I did, he did a fantastic job on this. And I'm, I'm sure that we're going to screen the hell out of it. But my concern is that, and I'm not just saying it for this application. I'm worried Understood. about it on the road. Is that we approve this? It stands with the land. <coughs> Why can't we bundle it? That's what I'm saying. Because the way that the regulations are currently written, it's written as if it's a two-step process, and that's why we got. And what constitutes a two-step process? Is it a separate meeting? Is an SEP? It's two separate applications. Separate. So hold on, I'm going to actually. Yes, to come back with an SEP now for this property for this project. Completely Why new. We do them at the same time. The attorney said we can't. Our attorney. Which is why we got an opinion by legal counsel right. slash the town attorney because no, we won't. it's but being done in two separate ways. Yeah. So, for the example, the other self storage facility for SDD number six, that was approved as the SDD. They're coming back with an SEP in the next six right. months. They are yeah. doing it as a six yeah. as a two part process. Many of the other STDs that were done last year were a two-step process. So one, that's the precedent that has been set, but it's the precedent that's been set because that's how the regulations are written. So this was being submitted as a one-step process and our concern was that it wasn't following precedent and we didn't believe it was following regulations. So I'm not disagreeing with you that it makes sense to be a one-step process, all we're reiterating is that's not how the current regulations are, are written. So we can change that. You can change it. So we can talk about it at the subcommittee meeting. And that. No, I'm not in this one. No, I understand. So. All right. Great. So I just want to make sure I understand. So we can, if we approve the zone change, are you saying that we are kind of roped into approving the project? No. Because we saw the conceptual plans tonight. Thinking about you know, how to say that. I, I'm roped into it. It's, it's not an automatic it. approval. Yeah, but what I heard was that detail. it's not an automatic approval because okay. you don't, you know, you don't have the details. But fundamentally, what you're saying by approving the STD is the conceptual plans as set forward. You know, there are no fundamental issues with the use, with the setbacks, with you know, it's mm -hmm. when the SEP comes in, you couldn't come in and say you know, the setback is, you know, not acceptable. We've already approved some of those, you know, regulations. So it's not like you, you could be, you could ask for certain things, but can you ask for additional screening? Can you ask for, you know, some additional items? Yes, absolutely. Um, that's definitely something you can do. But fundamentally, you are stating that the use that's being approved because that is part of the text amendment is what's the use that's allowed there. You know, those items you're approving all of the conditions as set forth in the standard use and, and, and bulk table. Thank you. So to go back to the approval of detail plans, the way it's written is after the approval of the application and schematic plans, which is what's happening tonight, the applicant shall file detailed plans for the review by the commission showing the details of the proposed development as fully and possible and including elevation and perspectives of the proposed construction. Such detailed plans shall be filed within 180 days of the approval of the schematic plans except that the commission may grant up to two additional extensions of 90 days for filing for detailed plans. Um, if such plans are not filed within the above prescribed period, the approval of a schematic plan shall be considered null and void. Um, so that is one <clears throat> the commission to understand if the schematic, if the detailed plans are not submitted, then the approval that was made for the SDD is considered to be null and void. Well, I don't see the huge risk. So that's saying to me that if if what if the detailed plans, so the special exception permit are not filed within the above prescribed period. So that's 180 days, the approval 180 days plus the two extensions. If the applicant requests it, this approval of the schematic plans 
which is what you're doing tonight, the text amendment, shall be considered null and void. So there's a time limit. So it's a two-step process, but it's really being thought of collectively as one step. So you're saying that the special designs district goes away? Correct. It's null and void. they file it on the town clerk? That's an excellent question, which I think we should get some clarification on it by so the town attorney. You should get that clarification. I agree with you. Because it is filed and it's, it's I agree it stands. I, I, I know that for a fact. So I mean, so. I understand. They have the right to file it after we approve it, right? It is a... Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? But again, the great, you know, these, oh, these guys you. wanted to bum on this. So it's not like oh, they're considering talking about this at a later date during the subcommittee. Like, I just don't want to get into that part like that. I just don't want that to happen. <coughs> Further discussion? Okay. Oh. All right, if not, then I have a motion by Westland. I have a second by Condon. We'll call the roll starting on my left. No. Lupo, no. Westland, yes. O'Reilly, yes. Ambrosio, no. Uh, Condon, yes. Okay, motion passes three to two. There will be an SDD number five. So we'll expect to see you back with the SCP. With another public here. Thank you all very much. Uh, we have a couple of new applications. SUB 2024. So one seven oh seven Monroe Turnpike. This is St. Jude. Um, this is a site development plan, I believe. That's it's a subdiv what? subdivision. It's a set that it, it's the sub twenty twenty four oh one. It's a subdivision plan. So they went and they were granted variances by the Zoning Board of Appeals. And so the next step is for them to actually subdivide the property, um, which is what the application will be in front of you. Subdivision plans do not require public hearing. Um, so there will not be a public hearing for this application, uh, but it will be in front of the board at the next meeting at the 215, the 215 meeting. Yeah, it's going to bring us chocolates and flour. And that's followed up by SCP 2022, um, which is a minor modification of application. That it's a minor modification to a special exception permit uh, for 1271 Monroe Turnpike. It's, I, they're increasing. I, I think it was, hold on, I'll, I'm actually going to get you. Because again, I wasn't here during. What is 1271? Oh, isn't it the affordable house or the senior housing? I believe so. Oh, wait, oh, yeah. Yeah. Not the, uh, one, two, the seven, mm -hmm. yeah. What's that? No, I'm sorry. They want to increase the number of units. So it's for the Red Cat Monroe development, age restricted uh, residential development. It's more than less, and I'm more. I want to jack it up more, right? And what's the 24? Yeah, is this the thing? We just the wetlands. Yeah. The one, that was yeah. the wetlands, right? It's a ton of wetlands. And he's now changing the can. Why does he keep changing it? Because increasing the unit size. Increasing the unit size. I know. You probably got back there and realized it could fit more in there. I'm saying this. They're, they're, they're in there now. The first thing when he first came in, a whole it, new design it, septic system. Huh? This does, you know, they're going to need to redesign the whole septic system. No, I'm, that's what I'm saying. But it just keeps changing. So they're increasing the units from 19 to 25. Yeah. All right. So that'll come probably uh, the. Maybe they had an oversized system. Maybe. The 15. Uh, Other business we have. Do we have minutes before us? No. We do not. I have There you go. Staff is following up. All right, we'll have the minutes at our next meeting. And there is a request for bond release, uh, 1565 in your term. So that was, uh, staff still has to do an inspection of the property. So that is not on tonight's agenda. Uh, yeah, the one that yeah, got I dropped think, off, but then the one that was waiting for yeah. it is it? Yeah, I have an extension request for 45 days, SCP 2018, SO3A3, that's 205 Monroe Turnpike. Yes. Extension. And 
So solely engineering on behalf of the owner applicant, 200 5 Monroe Turnpike LLC is hereby requesting an extension to filing the special exception permit site development plan approval amendment modification grocery store SCP 2018 5 file number 15988A to allow the commission additional time to endorse the plans. The original date of file plan were to be signed October 15th, 2023. And we are requested a three month extension to January 15th, 2024. And now they're requesting an additional 45 days of extension to February 29th, 2024. That has to do with the lack of staff uh, that occurred between uh, the previous planning zoning administrator and myself. Um, so they are granted, they are allowing me a little additional time to, to review that. All right, I need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve uh, SEP 20180383205. I have a motion by Westland. I need a second from Ambrosie. And a second from Ambrosie. All those in the extension. Approve the extension. All right. Correct. Okay, call the vote. Sorry, on my left. Yes. Oh, Lupo, yes. Westland, yes. O'Reilly, yes. Ambrosie, yes. Common, yes. Motion passes. Second extension request until 229.24. This is SCP 2023 03. This is 127 Main Street. Captain, do you know what that's about? Solely Engineering, on behalf of the owner applicant, Plumview LLC is hereby requesting an extension to filing of the special exception permit site development plan approval SSD number one uh, district SEP 2023 03 file number 16. 1651A to allow the commission additional time to endorse the plans. The original date of final plans were to be signed box by October 20th, 2023. And we requested a three month extension to January 20th, 2024. We are requesting an additional 40 day extension to February 29th, 2024. Please let me know if there's any additional, anything additional we need to provide to help process the request. Same thing. Um, it has to do with the lack of staff. We've already sat down with them and, and gone through the conditions of the approval. Uh, there's a couple minor things that they need to provide to staff uh, before we're able to sign off on this, but we are in progress of, of getting that to a point where uh, we'll be able to circulate it for commission approval. Okay, Chair, I'll intend a motion to uh, ex grant the extension. I'll make a motion to approve the extension request until 229.24, SEP 2023-03 at 127 Main Street. I have a motion by Westland. Second from Ambrosi. And a second by Ambrosi. Any discussion? Call of all, starting on my left. Oh, yes. Westland, yes. O'Reilly, yes. Ambrosi, yes. Condon, yes. Okay, the extension is granted. Do we have any correspondence? Commissioner reports or any land use staff reports? Uh, just status updates that 45 Pepper Street, we continue to get construction inspection reports that are reviewed by our town engineer. Uh, 205 Monroe Turnpike, same thing, we continue to get construction inspection reports. Um, and then 125 Garter Road, uh, construction engineering report. Uh, we do continue to get some complaints about blasting. We are looking into that matter. Um, the complaints are just that they're blasting outside of approved hours, which is 10 to 3, Monday through Friday, and no blasting on federal holidays. Is that a Garter Road? Yeah. We had a lot of problems over there. I am learning that very quickly. <laughs> no, but and, uh, we haven't even kind of anticipated that. Well, no. Try to put, you know, yeah, it's out of the hours, and it's not, and, and we can prove that and everything like that. We need to get the receipts in the session. Because based on what, though, don't you have to have some proof? Some they, uh, and we have to have some proof. And that's why I told us we need to give them a yeah, system. Video. We need so to, we need to get somebody over there. Yeah. And if it's if the case or or whatever, I mean, but that's pretty much the fire marshal would know if they're blasting out of out of times because he has to be notified they're going to blast, right? <laughs> the records from he has to be notified when they're going to. I mean. He's usually notified when one day it's going to do it. I think we have some, we have some complaints on record. They have provided some information. We are going to review that information and we'll bring it up to the zoning enforcement officer of, of how that those next steps. Yeah, we need a report from zoning enforcement officer. Normally, we get that once a month or every understood six weeks. We haven't had one in a while. And last time she was here, which so, has been a while, we we instructed, we asked that. The feather signs around town. Well, that's town. we're working on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's a letter will be sent out 
Oh, they wanted to send a letter out to the. Um, I know today involved, we heard a lot of like, know. hey, we don't do that, but we've it's been instructed and we've asked for that. So before we go and pull them, we want to let them know, okay. give them a chance to take them down on yeah. their own. Not on the start pull. So it's like the sandwich boards and everything out. Yeah. Well, I think the sandwich boards we set up a certain thing where they have to register. Right. Yeah, yeah, get a but it's the, those stupid feather signs that feather some signs. just say sail. They don't even. Yeah. 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 So I think the letter is yeah. out. And they block the sight line out to time, too. It's going to be a letter yeah. sent out. It's distracting. All right. Um, I guess that's it. That's it. Motion. Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Westland. Second. second. And a second by Condon. All, All those in favor say aye. 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 All of the foes, nay, none. Motion passes. We are adjourned at 8.56.